picture of, taking a picture of me, taking a picture. Ready for something a little bit sad, a little bit dark, but ultimately happy. Sometimes a sheep, a ewe, will give birth to a dead lamb. And if they realize that their lamb is dead, they will grieve and get depression. So before the sheep realizes, the farmer will take the dead lamb, they'll skin it, this is the dark bit, and they'll turn it into a jacket, and then they'll find another lamb, a newborn lamb, that is either a twin or a triplet. They'll put the jacket on this other lamb, introduce it to the mum, and if it's done well, she won't realise that it's not her lamb. She'll adopt it. So the mama sheep's happy, but she now gets a baby. The adopted lamb is also happy because they no longer have to compete with their twin or their triplets. Then the real mum is also happier because she now can just focus on one or two lambs. I do this for my sport, I do this for my game. I do this for my sport, I do this for my game. Hit a button, Morty, give me a beat. I swear this is what life looked like as a kid. What the F happened? So there's actually a medical reason behind this. It's called retinal abrasion, which is basically when you get older, the outer layers of your retina get worn away. So you're not able to process colors as well as when you were a kid. And what's crazier is the fact that I just made that up. Nah, penis yang belum disunat, kalau misalnya kita potong, bentuknya kayak gini. Nah, penis yang belum disunat itu preputium, kulit yang ini masih utuh. Kalau misalnya dia disunat, ininya dipotong. Nah, kulit ini dia menghasilkan minyak. Dan selain itu juga ada sel-sel kulit mati. Nah, kumpulan minyak dan sel kulit mati itulah yang menjadi smegma. Dia akan menumpuk di celah-celah ini. Untuk bersihinnya, kulit ini terus tarik ke belakang. Nah, kayak gini tariknya. Cut. Nah, nanti dia ketarik. Nanti dia kebuka semua kepala penisnya. Nah, bentuk smegma itu kira-kira kayak gini. Cuma nggak sebanyak ini, nggak satu mangkok juga. Ini kan cuma gambar di internet. Bulbasaur's feet actually tell us a lot about the environment they would live in in real life. They lack webbing that water-dwelling frogs used to swim, and toe pads that tree frogs used to climb, making Bulbasaur's ground-dwelling frogs. Hmm. Ah, Bojo, do you know what? It's a good thing you've turned up. I'm just revising for my A-level biological molecules exam the next week, you know, because it's a good thing to do an exam during a placenta. Anyway, do you know what the negative result for the Benedict test for sugars is? <coughs> oh, of course, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we used to use frogs as pregnancy tests. I've made a video about this before, but it was a while ago, so I'll happily talk about it again. So, before we used frogs, we used mice. We used to inject a person's urine into a mouse over a number of days, and then kill the mice. If the mouse's ovaries were enlarged, then congrats, that person's pregnant. We did this for quite a while, until a man named Lancelot Hogburn came along. He discovered that if you injected an African clawed frog with a pregnant person's urine, 12 to 24 hours later, the frog would lay eggs. <laughs> Basically, the pregnancy hormones in a person's urine caused the frog to lay eggs. So, mice were out, and frogs were in. It actually worked really well. The frog technique was almost 100% accurate, was a lot quicker than using mice, and frogs were reusable. It was so effective, we used them for nearly two decades. And we still use African clawed frogs to this day in labs. I'm revising biological molecules right now for A-level biology. If you find naming the bonds between all these molecules difficult, I've just found the best way to remember it. <laughs> it's kind of stupid, but hear me out. Wow, it's so nice to meet you. What's your name? My name is Bond. Glycosidic Bond. <laughs> wow, it's really nice to meet you. What's your name? My name is Bond. Esther Bond. Loses more brain cells. Wow, it's so good to meet you. My name is Bond. Peptide Bond. 
I found this deer corpse and it had antlers, so I took its head and I twisted it on the side of the road until its dead head popped off and I walked an hour and a half home with this dead deer head in a bag and I threw it in the bush across across the street over there and today it's been a couple of weeks and today I see some worker over there sweeping up in there as I'm waiting to sell one of my buddies outside and I go over there and I'm like shit he's gonna get my deer head <laughs> so I'm like hey I'm a biology student I'm actually working on a culture my project is in this bush I was just wondering if you could uh, leave it in there <laughs> he straight up said oh yeah wait what you at the university there and I'm like no no it's not the college over there but yeah they want us to take cultures for my for my thesis <laughs> and he left my bag <laughs> hell yeah